She says she takes tal- Tylenol. So then Tylenol is your healer, not God. See? How we view God, our understanding of God, determines how we pray. You know, Jesus said in John 17 verse 3, to know God. He said, this is eternal life. To know God. And Jesus Christ will be ascent. To know God. I think many of us need uh, to spend a great time seeking to know the Lord. Like Paul prayed, that I may know you. Like Mary and Martha, sitting down. Say, one thing, only one thing is needful. If you don't know the capability of God, it will be very hard for you to put your trust in God. A lot of people want to trust God that they don't understand if he's capable or not. You don't put your God in what is not capable. You don't put your trust, rather. You don't put your trust in what is not capable. For example, your car right now, if you, if you, if you are not sure of the brakes, when you're driving, you won't speed. But when you're speeding, you're sure everything is fine. People will say, don't put all your eggs in one basket. It's because you don't trust the basket. When you trust the basket, you place all your eggs in it and you'll be sure it's going to be safe. It's the same with the Lord. Our understanding of Lord. Now, to many people, who is God to you? Some say, God is my provider. And I ask them, what has He provided for you? Let me tell you this. You can't say somebody is something that he has not done for you. Say, she's my wife. Why? Because we are married. If we are not married, I can't call her my wife. You know, in, in, in the church, we just throw words. Look at when they give God this name, Jehovah Jireh. It happened on Mount Moriah. When God provided for Abraham and said, Jehovah Jireh, God is my provider. Something happened. It was not just some uh, wishful thinking or just trying to psych God. No. It was an experience. This name came out of experience. Now, the question is that many of us call all this name without the experience. So, we we, we have an empty barrel. We have all this knowledge, but no foundation. So the knowledge we have is not standing on anything. When any real trial comes, everything collapses. Everything collapses. So our knowledge of God is definitely key to our level of trust and how we pray. When you have tested the Lord, you have seen Him. I tell people, for example, there was a time, if I'm going to believe God for anything, if I'm asking God for help, I'm asking God to give me $50. God, please send someone to give me $50. Why? Because that's all I know that God can give to me. After a while, I can ask him for 100 bucks. After a while, 10 bucks, 1,000 bucks. After a while, 10,000, 20,000. I can, I'm asking God for anything now. Why? It took a while as I began to see God's hand. God's provision. As I begin to see what it can do. It did what? I can now say, indeed, God is my provider. Bible says, taste and see that the Lord is good. Before you say the Lord is good, it says what? Taste and see. It didn't just say assume. It didn't say join the crowd. Many of us are joining the crowd. It said taste and see. I can't say the food is sweet until I taste it. I tell people, you can't say God is good until you have tasted him. Why are you saying God is good when you have not tasted him? Taste him first. I say God is good. Why? I have reasons. Because I have tasted him. And that's how we know that God is good. So God can do anything. I can call God my healer because I've seen his healing power. I believe the Bible and I've seen it also. Many of us, why we are ineffective in trying to win soul is because everything we say is something that happened 2,000 years ago. There's nothing fresh. There's nothing fresh. There's nothing now. So, as you have said, your knowledge of God, your understanding of God, really determines how you pray. 
And how can you improve that? How can you improve that? I tell you, intentionality. To know anybody. To become familiar with somebody. No, don't let me use that word familiar. That's not a good word. To become acquaintance with somebody. To become a friend with somebody. To become close with somebody. It takes time. It takes what? Time. You go through thick and thin together. You don't reveal your secret to just anybody. You reveal them to those people that you trust, your trusted allies. These are the people you reveal your secret to. It takes time. And in that, in that relationship, I will, ch- I will beg somebody tonight. When you start working with the Lord, you may not have anything to really hold on to as what he has done. But dare to trust him. It must start somewhere. It must start somewhere. Dare to trust him at the beginning. So that you will start seeing small, small things. And the truth is that if you are going to be honest with yourself, even in your own life, there are things you have seen. They may not be big, but there are little, little things you have seen. Look at what the Bible says in Romans chapter 2. I think verse 4. Romans 2 verse 4. Say, don't you see how wonderfully kind, tolerant, and patient God is with you? Does this mean nothing to you? Can't you see that this is kindness is intended to turn you? To turn you to him. Said from your sin, but it's to turn you to him. So that you can trust him. All the little, little things you are seeing in your life, you see that what? You can trust him. All the things is given to you so that what? You can trust him. So that you can place your hand in his palm and he will hold you. And you won't try to remove your hand from him. So that's the thing. So how to start? Dare to trust him. My own spiritual work did not start on the plateau of gold. There are times I have to push myself. It will seem like you are subjecting yourself to pain for no reason. There are reasons. No pain, no glory. No pain, no glory. Maybe painful. That's what Paul said in 1 Corinthians. He said, our present pain is what? Is, is creating what? A better glory for us. No pain, no glory. Many of us don't want the pain. You will not have the glory. You will not have the glory. So, at the beginning, there are so many intentional steps you have to take. There are nudgings. There are things the Lord may be telling you in your heart that to you, it's impossible. You are asking, how can I do this? Ah, this is suicide. This is stretching me. How am I going to survive? Let me tell you, if you dare the Lord, if you trust Him, if you trust Him and dare to follow Him, at the end of the day, you will have done for yourself Far better, far better than what? Than your fear or your wisdom would have done for you. So God will ask you things. He will ask you to make decisions that will put you in situations that are not comfortable. In places where you are beyond reach of man. And you will have to wait on him, to trust in him. And the more he pulls you out of this pit, the more you gain trust in him. The more you have track record of what he has done. 